Today, I'm going to be reviewing four different products by a company called Optimization Elements, or OE Audio. I have their Tita, which is a single BA driver IEM that comes in at 169. I also have their Ala, which is also a single BA driver IEM that comes in at $49. We're also gonna take a look at the two dual CPS upgrade cable and a two pin to MMCX adapter. We have a lot we've gotta to cover today, so let's get started. This is Audio In Reviews. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the OE Audio Tita first. Uh, when you open up the package, this is everything that's included in the package. You have the IEM itself, of course. You have three different sets of tips, small, medium, and large. The three different tuning shells, the uh, stainless steel, aluminum, which is the black here, and then the brass, which is currently installed on the IEM, and uh, this nice case. Uh, they also include a tool uh, so that you can uh, remove and replace the shells um, and then they include some extra screws. Those are the tiny little things right there. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the specifications. Okay, so the Tita is OE Audio's top end offering coming in at 169. Now again, this is a sound tunable IEM. So you've got three different kinds of tuning shells. You have the stainless steel, which offers a more balanced sound signature. The aluminum, which is the black one here, uh, offers a more energetic sound signature. And then the brass, uh, which offers a warm sound signature. Uh, these do have MMCX connectors. Um, and uh, now the main body of the IEM itself and the nozzle are uh, constructed of uh, titanium. And you, so you have this plastic housing that goes around the outside of the, the nozzle and then of course the tuning shell itself. Uh, now, the way they say this horn is designed is supposed to enhance treble extension. Uh, these are single BA driver IEMs. Uh, they're Sonian drivers and uh, this is a crossover free design um, and the sound adjustments are, are done by the cavity itself uh, and I guess the horn the way again the horn design not only uh, is supposed to enhance treble extension but it's uh, supposed to I guess it introduces less distortion um, so now as far as the cable uh, this cable is one of OE Audio's nicer cables, um, and it is a two dual OFC cable. Um, it's got a Teflon insulated inner cords and metal medical grade uh, TPU coating, and it is a pretty soft cable, uh, so it's supposed to be you know skin friendly, um, and it does not have an ear hook on it because it is the way this designed. It is more of a an under ear type, um, the way you wear it, you're supposed to wear it under your ear. Uh, so the overall, as far as uh, comfort and isolation, these are pretty comfortable. Um, again, the, the cable is very soft. And uh, now typically I prefer to have an over ear style IEM. Uh, it just seems like the fit is a little more secure, especially if I'm on a walk. Uh, so I was surprised when I went on a walk with these. Uh, overall, I was really surprised I didn't have that many problems um, with them staying in place and, uh, and just comfort in general. Um, as far as isolation, uh, the, the tips they offer are quite good. Um, once, again, once I got a good seal. Now, if I'm just 
sitting by my fireplace uh, just having a listening session, I had no issues at all, even with long listening sessions. Um, and the comfort and isolation of these were, were quite good. I've talked about before in my other videos, uh, generally just in the other room, uh, my family will be you know, talking, hanging out, watching movies or whatever. And um, uh, sometimes if a IEM doesn't have a very, a very good isolation, some of that noise can bleed through. I didn't have any issues with these. Um, uh, these isolated quite well. And again, with these tips, I, I got a really good seal and uh, over, overall comfort uh, was very good as well. Okay, so now let's quickly go over the specifications of the ALA. Now, the ALA, as you can see, has a similar shape and style to the TITA. Uh, it is also a single BA driver IEM. It has an MMCX connection for the cable, uh, it, but it does not have a titanium housing um, like the TITA. This is some kind of metal, probably aluminum and plastic. Uh, one thing that, that is similar to the TITA is the way they designed the nozzle. Uh, we talked about how the nozzle of the, the horn design is designed to uh, minimize distortion, also enhance treble extension. Um, so that is so the design of the nozzle uh, on the ALA was taken after the, uh, the TITA. Now, um, as far as comfort and isolation, like the TITA, uh, with, with the tips that they offer. They're the same tips that come with the TITA. Uh, the isolation and comfort is, is very good. I had no isu issues with that at all. Um, I also went on walks with these uh, and uh, like the TITA, there were only a few times when I had to make adjustments, um, uh, but for the most part, they, they were very comfortable and they stayed in place. I didn't have any issues as far as uh, them being secure uh, having a secure fit in my ear. And as far as the cable, uh, the cable is actually very, uh, very nice. Um, it's soft, very comfortable, uh, doesn't tangle easily, and just sounds really, really good. Again, this one, like the Tita, does not have the hook design uh, because it is an under the ear design. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about their upgrade cable. Okay, so along with the TITA and the ALA, OE Audio requested that I review their top end offering cable, which is the two dual CPS cable. Uh, this is a silver cable. It comes in at $129. And uh, CPS stands for concentric lay, which is the way the cable is intertwined. Uh, purified silver, CPS, concentric lay, purified silver uh, and so these strands right here each of each one of these cords is made up of 37.06 millimeter silver strands so there's 37 of those silver strands in each one of these cords uh, totaling of 148 strands um, now, as far as the, the overall construction of the cable, the build quality, it's excellent. Uh, it's very, very soft, very supple. And of course, the sound is, is as excellent with this. And I did compare this with, with other cables. And I did notice that, uh, that when I, I tried, when I swapped the, the stock cable on the ALA, and the TITA, uh, that this cable just seemed a little more transparent overall. Uh, it seemed like the treble was just a little, uh, just a little more uh, clarity and detail in the treble and just overall a more transparent sound um, and, and, and a little more balanced also. Now, um, now as far as comfort and, and fit, uh, I tried this cable, I took it on walks of course, and I, I used it with their adapter. We'll go over this adapter here in a second. Um, I used it, of course, with their adapter with the, the ALA and the TITA uh, on walks. And um, I tried it over the ear and under the ear. I also used this cable with my Theodio Monarch uh, over the ear and then my SA6, uh, Dunu SA6, and I used that over the ear as well. And um, of course, the cables that come with the Monarch and the SA6 and a lot of other 
uh, IEMs out there, they, uh, they usually have the, the uh, an ear hook. Now, this is the The Audio Monarch cable here. And as you can see, it has the ear hook. And then uh, as, as does the cable for the SA6 has the ear hook. So that's kind of what I was used to. Um, and uh, so other cables that I've tried before without the ear hooks, I, uh, depending on how soft they were, if they were too stiff, sometimes it just didn't work very well. Uh, but with this cable here, um, I had no issues with that whatsoever as far as uh, them, uh, uh, the IEM staying in my ear securely. Uh, so I wore these over the, the top of my ear, ear, also tried it under, both ways were very comfortable, very, very secure. And, but when I wore this over my ear, like with my Monarch, I would tighten the, the, the chin slider, of course, and pull it tight. And, um, and again, once I would pull the, the chin slider kind of tight, it'd pull this down below, below the back of my ear. And um, it just, it was almost like the cable wasn't even there because this, this cable is so thin. It was just so, so comfortable. So as far as uh, microphonics, I did not know, notice any issues with microphonics. The cable itself was very, very quiet. So overall, this cable is, is quite amazing. Again, between the sound performance, the overall uh, just comfort and the, the supple texture of the cable, and it's a very beautiful cable also. Um, and I love the, the metal connectors on uh, the terminal and on the two-pin connector. Um, and then, of course, the, the little splitter is, here has the OE Audio uh, emblem on there. Not sure if you can see that in the camera. So the cable itself is very, very nice. Now, they also asked me to review uh, these little uh, adapters here. So what this adapter does right here, this is pretty cool. Uh, if you have, for example, a two-pin cable and a MMCX style IEM, what this does is it allows you to use a two-pin cable. So any of your two-pin cables, you can just plug right into the adapter and then plug that into your MMCX uh, IEM. And so that worked just brilliantly. Uh, these are, I believe, $24.99 uh, for the pair. So I think that is a pretty cool little uh, idea right there. That, that's, that, that's very nice because, again, you can use any of your two pin cables with any MMCX IEM that you have. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about the sound of the Tita and the Ala. <music> Okay, so let's talk about the overall sound signature of the Tita and the different tuning options that you have with the three different interchangeable tuning shells. Uh, again, you have the stainless steel, the brass, and the, uh, the aluminum. Now, the stainless steel and the brass have both have two small holes in the back. The stainless steel has a smaller hole in the back and the stainless steel gives you the most balance of the three. That's probably the most overall balanced sound signature of the three. So you've got pretty tight bass on, on that. And again, a pretty balanced overall tuning. The brass has a little bit of a bigger hole in the back and has more of a warm sound signature. And the aluminum has a little more of an energetic sound signature, probably the most energetic of the three. So let's go ahead and talk about the treble of the Tita. We'll also talk about how the different interchangeable tuning shells affects the treble. I would say the only one I really noticed even a slight difference with was on the aluminum. And again, that one just has a little bit more of an energetic presentation. So I think the treble just had a little more energy and presence uh, there with the aluminum. With the stainless still, 
and the, the brass, I didn't notice any difference at all with the treble. Now there is treble roll off past 10K, but it still does maintain a pretty good amount of sizzle and air. Uh, of course, when I'm evaluating treble, I always listen really closely to cymbals and how natural they sound and how much detail an IEM can pull out of a cymbal. These do a really good job of pulling detail out of cymbals. Cymbals sounded natural. Uh, when uh, hi-hats had good amount of sizzle and you can tell again the different tones between the different types of, of cymbals and the thicknesses and also the dynamics of uh, how hard the stick is striking the cymbal. Uh, crashes had a really good splash to them. Um, as far as air in live recordings, the Tita has a good amount of air. Uh, live recordings had a, a wide uh, sound stage and uh, not super deep, but definitely a wider sound stage. Um, as far as image uh, imaging and uh, instrument placement, these do a very, very good job uh, with that. Uh, you can you can definitely tell where the instruments are placed on the stage uh, with the Tita. And again, I didn't notice a big difference in the treble with the brass and the stainless steel, but when I put the aluminum, again, that has that closed back uh, that's the closed back tuning shell. I did notice a little more energy in the lower treble. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the mids. Now, when I got to the mids, that's when I started to notice the biggest variation in the, the sound uh, signature between the three different tuning shells. Uh, I didn't notice much of a difference between the aluminum and the stainless steel, but I did notice a difference with the brass. Uh, again, the brass one has more of a warm sound signature, so uh, it elevates the lower mids just a little bit. It also elevates uh, the bass and the sub bass, but we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, so that brass, when I put that brass tuning shell on, again, it just warmed up the mids uh, to, to, to a really nice level for me. I tend to gravitate to, for, to more of a, a warm sound signature. So again, of the three different tuning shells, the brass was my favorite. Uh, as far as the mids and the upper mids, I didn't notice much variation uh, there at all. Um, again, things I look for in mids are instrument timbre, overall instrument presentation and, and, and vocal presentation. Uh, instrument timbre was good, so trumpets, pianos, guitars, all sounded very natural. Uh, vocals sounded very good, uh, so I didn't notice any um, uh, timbre issues at all. Overall, the mid presentation between all three tuning shells was very, very good. Now, like the mids, I did notice a difference in the bass with the different tuning shells. Uh, the brass seemed to affect the bass the most. Because, again, because that one has the warmest sound signature of the three. So you've got the elevated lower mids, elevated bass, and sub bass. I didn't notice as much of a difference between the aluminum and the stainless steel. The difference I did notice was that the stainless steel was slightly faster and just a little, a little bit tighter bass. The aluminum uh, had a little more bass energy, but as far as mid bass and sub bass, it was about the same between the stainless and the aluminum. Uh, again, my favorite was the, the brass because that had the warmest uh, uh, sound signature of the three. Now, as far as extension, uh, texture, layering, and slam, uh, between all three, again, I would say the brass had the most slam. Uh, as far as texture and layering, they all had about the same uh, texture and layering, which was very good. Um, uh, as far as extension, there was a little bit of sub bass roll off, uh, but for the most part, but there was enough sub bass presence to make uh, electronic music enjoyable. Again, I always, I've got several tracks that I use uh, by Yoshi Hirakawa to, to kind of test that sub bass and roll off. Um, again, there's a little bit, but there's still enough to give you good at satisfaction. Um, okay, well that covers uh, everything with the Tita. Let's go ahead and move on to the Ala. Okay, so like the Tita, the Ala is a single BA driver IEM and it even has a similar uh, nozzle structure and body structure, but of course uh, this one's $49, the, the Tita is $169, but the Tita has the titanium body and nozzle 
uh, with the upgraded shell. Uh, but again, the similarities are in the nozzle structure uh, and the overall body. Now, as far as the tuning, uh, the tuning is quite different. I would describe the tuning of the ALA as upper, mid, forward. Um, and uh, I was comparing the different uh, tuning shells on the Tita to the ALA, trying to find any similarities. I would say the most, the closest one I could find is the stainless steel, but even that's very, very different. Um, again, this has a quite forward upper mids. Uh, so now, one thing I did notice about this right away, uh, and again, we will get into the details of the treble mids and the bass for the ALA, but one thing I noticed right away, again, uh, like like the the Tita, there is some treble roll off and sub bass roll off. It's more noticeable on the Ala, um, but we'll get into the details of that. Let's go ahead and talk about the details of the treble mids and the bass of the Ala. Now, like the Tita, the treble of the Ala does have a smoother, more relaxed presentation. Now, I want to talk about the good aspects of the treble before I talk about the things that I wished. Uh, were just a little bit uh, better. Uh, one thing I did notice with the treble of the ALA is the, the detail retrieval. Um, again, when I test, when I evaluate treble, uh, I, I, I have my go-to songs that I listen to, uh, that I, I listened for, for cymbal accuracy, um, I listened for air, uh, I, uh, the sound stage, and uh, also uh, one of the things I listen for, again, because I'm a drummer, I listen for stick attack, uh, the attack on uh, snares and uh, on, on toms. Also, uh, I listen for uh, the upper, uh, the higher notes of piano and also the higher uh, notes of guitar and also the pick sound. When you're listening to like an acoustic, uh, an acoustic record, a recording of like an acoustic guitar, Sometimes you can hear that pick sound or the fingers actually picking on the strings. Those are those higher frequencies. Uh, these were able to pull all of those details out quite nicely. Uh, so acoustic music and vocals sounded really, really nice with the ALA. Now the things uh, where I felt like the ALA maybe was slightly lacking on was air presentation in live recordings. Um, again, those are those really high, high frequencies. Uh, and because of the, the treble roll off past 10K, um, it just seemed like that air was missing just a little bit. Also with cymbals, uh, the good things I noticed about the cymbals was on, uh, in some of the lower fr uh, treble frequencies of the cymbals, uh, the overall body of, of like a ride, you had pretty good presence and detail retrieval on that. Um, uh, I did notice uh, that the, the treble, the lower treble could be a little bit peaky on cymbal crashes when I was listening to a song, uh, the Tingval Trio. Uh, it just seemed like that when the, uh, the drummer was striking the, the crashes uh, w with a little more force that the, uh, they were just again a little peaky uh, and a little, a little bright in the lower treble area. Um, uh, but uh, there was still a relatively good amount of sizzle with hi-hats. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the mids. Okay, so my favorite thing about the ALA is the mids. Uh, again, we talked about these having more of an upper mid forward uh, presentation and the lower treble uh, was a little more forward also. So the negative side of that again was you had a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of peakiness with cymbal crashes. Uh, but the good thing about this was uh, how it pushed female vocals forward. Um, also, instrument presentation was a little more forward as far as the, the, the higher notes uh, the, of a trumpet or higher piano notes. Uh, so, so it can push some instrument sounds a little more forward. And again, female vocals a little more forward than male vocals. Uh, so. What sounded really good on these for me was acoustic female uh, music. So acoustic guitar with female vocals sounded very, very nice 
on the ala. Uh, now, as far as the rest of the mids, uh, detail retrieval and overall clarity of the mids uh, is very, very good. Um, again, when you get to uh, male vocals, it seemed like the male vocals uh, were pushed a little bit further away. The more you get into the mid frequencies also, the lower trumpet notes, lower piano notes. Um, and as you get into the, 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 the lower mids, they do start to elevate slightly. Uh, which is good because you still have, you can hear some of the deeper tones in snares and, and uh, like a 13 or a 14 inch uh, tom. Um, uh, but, but it still seemed a little more recessed again than the upper mids. But again, the mids overall, uh, again, more upper forward, not, not as balanced as I would have preferred them, but, but good. Okay, so now moving from the mids in to the bass. Again, you have that transition from the lower mids into the mid bass. Those frequencies right there, um, again, a, a lot of times are what will pull out the warmth in a male vocal um, uh, or a, a, a deeper tuned snare. Again, you've got 13, 14 inch tom. Uh, those have warmer notes. A cello has those warmer notes, lower piano notes. So those lower mids and mid bass frequencies are uh, responsible for that warm tone. Now also, those a lot of times, whenever you're looking for texture, layering, and detail in bass, that's where you're gonna find a lot of that texture and layering in. Now, so, and the reason I'm saying that is because I have to remind you, this is a single BA driver, uh, IEM. You have a single BA driver that's taking care of the entire frequency range. And one of the things that impressed me about this was this, the, the, uh, the ability for this to pull out that texture and layering and clarity and detail throughout the entire frequency range, the treble, mids, and the bass. Uh, so uh, that, that was really impressive to me. So you've got, just like the treble, just like the mids, the ability for this thing to pull out the detail, clarity, and texture in the lower mids and mid bass was really impressive. Now moving from the lower mids into the bass and the sub bass, um, there is, a, again, you still have a little more elevation as you move from the mid bass into the bass, a little more bass elevation than mid bass, but it's not overpowering the mids at all. Um, uh, so, and you have, so you still have a, a pretty decent amount of slam uh, with certain electronic music, again, depending on the type of recording you're listening to. Now, moving from the bass into the sub bass, there is some sub bass roll off, but there's still enough sub bass presence. So to, again, depending on what you're listening to, uh, there was listening, I was listening to uh, some of Yossi Hurakawa's uh, 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 recordings and he has a lot of songs that have really good uh, sub bass presence and that's a good uh, he's got a lot of stuff that's really good for testing sub bass so even though you have some sub bass roll off there's still enough sub bass presence to satisfy um, and again it depends on what kind of music you're listening to but in the bass frequencies the thing that impressed me the most about this was again the texture layering and detail and uh, the speed. The ability of this to pull out the detail in all the frequencies, again, you have a single BA driver that's handling all of that. And the overall just detail and clarity of these uh, is quite impressive. Uh, again, for $49, I think this is a really, really good offering from Optimization Elements. Now, of the two, between the Tita and the ala, I would probably choose the Tita. I like the idea of having the tuning shells, uh, also the, the titanium shell and the quality of the cable is just very, very good on the Tita. So I want to thank OE Audio for supplying these review units uh, for me to check out. I've had a lot of fun trying these, switching out the, the tips, uh, trying different cables, um, trying all the tuning shells. It's just been a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this review. Uh, again, if you're a new viewer, please subscribe, please like, please share these videos. Thank you guys so much. Hope you have an awesome day.